Good afternoon, Patriots. Um, I wanted to make a video today um, about how to keep focused on what God's plan is for your life. There are so many voices out there uh, giving information, giving um, people things to do, places to go, that it's easily to get um, sucked in and just overwhelmed with the amount of um, things that you could possibly do and be involved in. And so I just wanted to share some some very helpful information that I've learned over over the last couple years of how to um, not get overwhelmed, how to stay focused um, on what is God, what God has called you specifically to do. Because a lot of times there's good causes and 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 groups to join and things to do, um, but just because they're good doesn't mean that's what God wants you specifically to do. And so, for me, what I found is that the best way to discern what you specifically are supposed to do um, is through, <laughs> it seems too easy, but prayer. Um, and I grew up thinking that prayer was just talking to God. And I have learned that um, prayer is a conversation with God. So therefore, if it's a conversation, that means that there's talking and then there's listening. And too often I found myself talking the most of the time. Um, and maybe even all the time. Maybe that was some of my prayers were just telling God what I wanted or needed. And um, I didn't do the listening portion. And so I just really have found over the years that that was what was missing, was the listening part. And in this crazy insanity of this world and the go, go, go and the fast, fast, fast track of everything and, you know, everything's urgent, everything's a fire that needs to get put out, it is so easy to put that off. It's so easy to be distracted by the noisy and the loud and the uh, urgent matters. And so I have found it even more important to take that quiet time with God. And it's kind of like the more you do it, the better you get, you know. Um, I kind of liken it to dancing. You know, when you first learn a new dance or a new dance partner, you know, it's it's a little choppy at first, you know, you, you're not in, you know, in groove, you're not in step. And so it can get a little bumpy, or maybe you step on the person's toes. And um, needless to say, I have stepped on God's toes many a time. <laughs> Thank God, he's a very patient God. And um, he's very gentle in his redirection. Um, and if I don't listen, to that redirection he gets a little firmer and then if I don't listen to that redirection he's a little firmer and a little firmer and um, there's been times when he's had me in a headlock <laughs> because I wasn't listening to his his redirection and so um, if you really honestly want to hear God speak to you and give you direction and are willing to do whatever he tells you to do. That's the key. Because a lot of times maybe we want to hear what he has to say, but only if he says what we want to hear, right? And so you have to really be willing to do whatever he tells you to do. Because a lot of times what he says doesn't make sense. You know, it's kind of like, you know, a child when they, you know, they want to run after that ball that's you know going across the street in their mind they're thinking the ball's getting away I gotta go run and get it you know they're not thinking about the highway and the traffic you know and so when a parent stops them they get mad they're like my ball's getting away I need to go get it you know and they're frustrated that their parent is trying to stop them and sometimes that's how we are with God you know we see this urgent matter and we want to do this and God's saying wait and we're like but we need to do it now and it's because he sees the danger. He sees things and knows things that we have no clue. And so it's so important to, um, I like to put it in, in, in military com, uh, terms, um, where, you know, 
You know, we see something and before we go and before we jump into action, we look at our commander. We look at our drill sergeant, our, our authority, our, our leader. We look at God, we make eye contact, we look for his direction, you know? Do I go, do I stay? Um, and, then, and then we follow the orders without question. We just do it. I mean, I would love to see a soldier sit down and argue with this commander about, about whether he's supposed to move forward or fall back. You know, it doesn't work, you know? And our relationship with God, doesn't work either I mean we can do it but it's very detrimental to um, our life sometimes um, if we sit and try to argue with God you know and I found for me anyway things go way better if I just do what he says you know if I just do what he says and then maybe later afterwards in prayer just say okay Lord help me understand why did you have me do that you know why is this important when I wanted to do that and believe it or not I usually don't ever get to that point you know because usually after I've done it I'm like ah oh, that's why you wanted me to do that you know and um, there's not all the time sometimes I don't understand um, but I trust him I trust him to know that when I stood up to something that I felt was wrong and I got flack for it. I can trust him that I did the right thing because I talked to him first and he said, stand up, you know, like, <laughs> so on my, on my, uh, on the end of my driveway, I live in a very busy street and I felt led to put a sign out there very early on in the, in the, the pandemic to put a sign that said, trust God. And I have gotten a lot of positive, but I've also gotten some flack. And some of the flack um, kind of triggered a little fear in me. And um, I kind of looked at God and said, okay, God, did you really want me to do this? You know, I'm kind of making myself a target here. Um, my neighbors also, when they were out there, because we live in a duplex, they didn't know they were just pissed so they wanted to yell at somebody and usually when the males of the household were out there they got the flack they they rarely yelled at us us females but yeah and so I there's times when I'm like okay God did I hear you right you know did I misunderstand you did I misinterpret what you said and um, I've always felt like he's like no look at the big picture Look at the people that you've inspired. Look at the people that you've given hope to. And you don't even know half the people. I mean, there's so many people to drive by this busy road. I've probably helped more people than I can even fathom. And that one or two obnoxious person that cussed me out as they drove by, you know, is probably minuscule compared to the people that I've helped. And so, I mean, there's a really good instance where I, where I checked back with him, you know, and I just overwhelmingly felt at peace with, um, with what I felt like he was leading me to do. And, um, yeah, so I just, I just really encourage you, um, to spend more time listening, um, and do less talking when it comes to God, because, um, yeah, it's amazing, you know, and at first, you know, just like a new language, you're not going to catch on right away, you know, sorry, my computer is obnoxious, you're not going to necessarily catch on right away, you know, it'll be hard to maybe understand where he's leading you or, 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 you know, what he's prompting you to do, but I really believe if you're sincere, he will protect you, you know, if, if you misinterpret what he's saying or, or, um, misunderstand what you're, you know you're doing if you really have that desire he will redirect you if you get off you know if you get off track or feel like you're supposed to do this and then you run into a brick wall you know a lot of times um, our first reaction is well I did something wrong you know I misunderstood him and it's not always that sometimes the wall is supposed to be there and sometimes you're supposed to climb that wall and sometimes climbing that wall makes you stronger and that's what he intended that's why he led you to that wall 
Maybe the wall's not supposed to stop you. Maybe you didn't take a wrong turn. Maybe that's exactly where he wanted you to go. Because maybe in climbing that wall, and I'm talking metaphorically, of course, that that action of climbing that wall or stepping out in faith or overcoming that obstacle, that that was there to strengthen you, to strengthen your faith, to strengthen your resolve, and that that was the plan all along. We just don't know. As, as humans, we think based on our senses, you know, what we can see, hear, smell, touch, feel. And when you're walking in faith, you're, you're following something that senses can't tell you anything about. You know, the only thing sometimes that you can, that you can go by is that still small voice that he's whispering to you. And so that's why I found ways to cut out a lot of the noise so that I can hear him better. You know, it's not that TV's bad. It's too much of it is bad because then you can't hear his promptings. You know, it's not that, you know, maybe these activities and these groups that you're involved in, it's not that they're necessarily bad, but if they're distracting you from hearing his voice, that might not be such a good thing. And so my mom and I have this, <laughs> this thing um, that we do every morning where as we're eating breakfast or doing our readings or, you know, our, our, you know, our Bible readings or our meditations, you know, we have this thing that we call our marching orders. You know, God is our commander and we're listening for his marching orders for the day. You know, maybe I look over my phone and say, okay, this is what I got scheduled, but all right, God, what do you have planned for me today? You know, this is what I think needs to get done. Now guide me and direct me in the way that you want me to go. And I'm telling you, he will. If you remain open, if you don't necessarily hear what you're supposed to do, you just go about doing what you think he wants you to do, he will guide you. If, if you're listening and you're open to his voice, he will guide you. And you will go on the most exciting, amazing journey. And I do have to say, God's kind of a crazy driver. So be prepared for a fun, scary as heck adventure. But that's real life. That is real life. So I don't know. Enjoy it. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.